Hi everyone, my name is Milan and in today's video I'm going to show you 8 different ways to check if a collection contains duplicate elements. We're going to go over each of the implementations and then we're going to run some benchmarks with different collection sizes to see which of them performs the best. Let's jump straight into the code and see which implementation is the fastest. We're starting off from the empty contains duplicate static class and this is where we're going to be adding our implementations. All of them are going to be static methods and they're going to return a boolean value with a true or false result indicating if a duplicate was found or not. The first implementation that we're going to take a look at is going to be the brute force approach. All of the methods are going to be generic and they're all going to have an argument of i numerable of t and let's see how we would implement the brute force approach. The idea here is to take each element of the collection and compare it to every other element in the collection. If we find another element that is equal to the one that we are comparing to, then we have a duplicate, otherwise we don't. To do this, I'm going to create a for each loop and iterate over the collection, and this is going to be our outer element that we are comparing with every other element in the collection. And then we need another for each loop, and this one is going to contain the inner element that we're going to be comparing to our outer element. We have to be careful here not to compare the element to itself because we are not skipping any values in the inner loop. So we need to track the index of the outer and the inner element. And if the indices are the same, we're going to skip comparing them. I'm going to create a variable here, which is going to be the outer index. And I'm going to start it from minus one. And then inside of the first for each loop, I'm going to increment it by one so that it starts off from zero. I'm also going to create a variable here that is going to track the inner index. Again, it's going to start from minus one and inside of the loop, I'm going to increment it by one. So the first check that I want to do is if the outer index is equal to the inner index, then we have to continue. We don't want to compare our outer and inner elements in this case, because this is the same element in the collection. Otherwise, we're going to check if the outer element equals the inner element and if that is the case then we found a duplicate if we complete our outer for each loop and we don't encounter a duplicate then we have iterated over our entire collection and determined that we don't have a duplicate value and we can just return false from our method i can already tell you that this approach is going to be terrible in terms of performance because we have nested loops and that really does not scale well when we have a large number of elements but we're still going to leave it like this because it's going to be useful when we compare it to the other implementations that I'm going to show you. What would be a better approach? I wonder if there's a data structure out there that can only contain distinct elements. When I think about it, there actually is such a data structure and it's called the hash set. And this is what we're going to be using in our next implementation. So let's see what that would look like. I'm going to create another method and here I'm going to be using just one for each loop. So I'm going to call the method for each. Again, it's going to be generic and it's going to have the i numerable of t argument. So I mentioned the idea here is to somehow use the hash set data structure. So I'm going to create a new instance of the hash set. And let's see how can we use the hash set to our advantage. If we take a look at the set add method, you can see that it returns a boolean value. It's going to return true if the insert is successful and it's going to return false if the insert was not successful, meaning we have encountered a value that is already present in the hash set. So now the implementation becomes simple. We are going to iterate over our collection and we're going to be adding each of the elements to the hash set. And if any of the inserts fails, we have found a duplicate. So I'm going to say if set add element and remember that when this returns false, we encountered a duplicate. So I'm going to say if not set add, meaning the insert was not successful, then we can return true because we have encountered a duplicate. Otherwise, we go through the entire collection. There are no duplicates and we just return false. This approach is significantly faster than the previous one because we don't have nested loops. We only have one iteration through the collection, but the price we are paying here is an increase in memory consumption because we are using an additional data structure. So that's something that you have to consider. 
I'm going to show you two more approaches that are similar to the one we have here. We're just going to be using something different to iterate over the collection. We're going to be using a few methods from the linku library. So the first one that I want to show you is using the linku any. So I'm going to create another method and I'm going to name it any. This is going to make it simpler for us when we are writing the benchmarks so that we know which implementation we are calling. So here I'm also going to create a hash set to store the elements that we have already seen. So set is a new set and the implementation is super simple. We're just going to return enumerable any where the element was not able to be added to the set. And this is the entire implementation. The idea is the same as our previous approach with the for each loop. How any works is it checks if any element in the collection satisfies the expression that we specified here. In this case, the expression is when the adding to the set does not succeed. And what's interesting with any is it's going to short circuit, meaning as soon as this condition is met, any is going to complete and return from this method. This is identical to how our previous implementation looks like. As soon as the condition here is met, we return true. The added benefit with using the link you any method is conciseness. We have a nice little one-liner implementation here. The opposite of the any method is all. So let's see how we can use that one to achieve the same result. So I'm going to create a new method here, which is going to be all. And again, I need a hash set to store the values that we have already seen. And now we're going to use the link you all method to iterate through this collection. So I'm going to say enumerable all, and I'm going to specify the set add method as an expression group. And I need to negate the return value from the all method to satisfy the condition that there is a duplicate. How all works is it's going to iterate through the entire collection and it's going to determine if all elements satisfy the expression that we have specified here, which is the set add method. And if it encounters at least one element that does not satisfy this condition, which is going to be our duplicate value, then it's going to return false from the method. And we negate that false value to get true as a result of our contains duplicates method. All right, so we've seen four implementations so far. So we're halfway there to the eight that I'm promised that I'm going to show you. The next one that I'm going to take a look at is going to be based on the link you group by method. So I'm going to create a new method here. I'm going to name it group by of t and it's going to have an i enumerable of t argument. And let's see what the idea is here. We want to group by the value of each element in the collection. And then we need to check if any of the groups contains more than one element, meaning there is a group that contains duplicates. This can be one or more values. So how we would write this is we would first group the collection by the collection value. And then we need to check if there is at least one group, any, that satisfies the condition that the number of elements in the group is greater than one. So we get a nice little one line expression. We'll see how this one behaves in terms of performance but my hunch is it's not going to be that amazing. So this approach relies on grouping the elements of the collection and then counting to see if we have any group with more than one element. I'm going to apply a similar idea in our next method, which is going to be based on the link queue distinct method. So I'm going to create a new method for the contain duplicate class. So what we want to do here is we want to find all of the distinct elements in our collection. And when we have found the distinct elements, we want to count them and we want to compare this count to the number of elements in the original collection. And if these counts are different, meaning we have a different number of distinct elements versus the number of all elements in the collection, then we obviously have a duplicate value. I have two more implementations to show you. They're going to be based on the hash set again, but we're going to be doing something different. Here we're going to be using the to hash set link you method to convert our collection to a hash set. And then we're going to be comparing the count to the original number of elements, just like in the previous example, but it's going to be a little different in terms of the implementation. So we're going to return enumerable to hash set. 
and we're going to take the count property of this hash set and we're going to compare it to the number of all elements in the collection. Again, the idea is the same. If these counts are not equal, we have a duplicate value. What to hash set does is it takes our collection and it converts it to an instance of a hash set. Then we can access the count property on the hash set and compare that to the result of the count method on the enumerable. The last approach that I'm going to show you is going to be almost the same to the one with to hash set. It's also going to create a new hash set, but we're not going to be using the link you method. Rather, we're going to create the hash set ourselves. Let me quickly create the signature for our method. The idea is instead of calling to hash set, I'm just going to call the new hash set of the constructor. It has an overload that accepts an i numerable of t. Now that I have the hash set instance, I can access the count property and compare that to the enumerable count. So we get the exact same implementation like in the previous method, but the added benefit is we don't have the indirection of this method call because we're directly calling the constructor and then accessing the count property. So these are the eight implementations of finding a duplicate that I wanted to show you. So now we're going to write our benchmark and we're going to see which implementation performs the best. I'll head over to the benchmark class and this is where we are going to be writing our benchmark. I need to introduce a NuGet package to be able to execute our benchmarks. And the NuGet package that we need is benchmark.net. Here's the benchmark.net library. Let's install it. And we're going to be using this library for running our benchmarks. The first thing that I'm going to need inside of the benchmark class is going to be a private static field that is going to contain the array which is going to represent our collection. And we're going to define a global setup method to initialize this array before each of the benchmarks execution. This method is going to apply our setup logic and is going to run only once before executing all of the benchmarks. So each of our benchmarks is going to be using the same collection instance. The way you define a global setup method is by creating a method called global setup. It's going to be a void method with no arguments and it has to have the global setup attribute. I want to test against different sizes of our collection. So I'm going to define a parameter in our benchmark. I'm going to call it size. And the way you do that with benchmark.net is by specifying the params attribute and you specify the array of values that you want for this attribute. I want to test a few different collection sizes. I'm going to check for 100, 1000 and 10,000 elements. So we're going to use this property to initialize our collection in the global setup. The setup is going to be very simple. I'm just going to use enumerable, range, one, two, size, and convert that to an array. What range does is it's going to return an enumerable of numbers starting from one, and it's going to increment by one to the number of elements that you specify as the second argument. So we have our collection in place but it only contains distinct elements. So we have to take care of the duplicate value. And I also want to consider that our implementations for finding the duplicate value are going to behave very differently based on the location of that duplicate value inside of the collection. So I want to be able to define the relative positions of the duplicate value inside of the collection. So I'm going to do something like this. I'll create a parameter which is going to represent the percentage value of where in the collection I want the duplicate to be. I'm going to call it duplicate location and let's define it as a parameter for our benchmark. And I want to try out three different locations for the duplicate element. The first duplicate is going to be at the 30% mark inside of the collection. The second is going to be at the 60% mark and the last duplicate we can put at the 80% mark inside of the collection. Now that we have our location of the duplicate value as a percentage, we need to convert that into an actual index so that we can set the value in our collection. So the way that we get that index is going to be simple. We're just going to take the duplicate location parameter and multiply it by the size. And since this is going to be a double value, I'm going to cast that into an integer. So now we have the index of our duplicate value and we want to set our duplicate in the collection. So I'm just going to take the next element in the array 
and I'm going to set that at the current index. So this takes care of the global setup for our benchmark. I'm going to add a memory diagnoser attribute to the benchmark class. And now we can go ahead and quickly define our benchmark methods. So I'm going to name them in the same way that these methods are called inside of the contains duplicate static class. All of the benchmark methods are going to return a Boolean value. So the first one that we had was the brute force one. And we're just going to return contains duplicates, brute force, and we're going to pass in our collection. To tell the benchmark.net library that this method is the one that we should benchmark, we need to decorate it with the benchmark attribute. And this is how we define a benchmark method. I'm going to quickly set up the remaining benchmark methods, and then I'm going to run the benchmark, and we're going to take a look at the results. I set up all of the remaining benchmark methods. All that they do is they just call the respective method inside of the contains duplicates class. Before I run the benchmark and show you the results, I'm going to need you to really smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss any of my future videos. And now that we have that out of the way, we can run the benchmark and take a look at the results. The benchmark results are finally in and let's see what we have. The brute force implementation is clearly the slowest in all of the test cases, so I don't think it should even be considered for a real application. And if you take a look at the allocated memory, it's by far the worst. I want to discuss the implementations using for each, any, and all. You can see that they get progressively slower and slower as the location of the duplicate is further and further away from the start of the array while at the same time the implementations using distinct to hash set and new hash set behave the same regardless of the position of the duplicate element in the array. This is because these implementations iterate through the collection once to calculate the distinct element in this case or to generate the hash set in this case and this case which is a constant operation based on the length of the collection. The approach using group by is somewhere in the middle it's not as bad as the brute force approach, but it's still significantly slower than the implementations using the other approaches. Let's take a look at the results where the collection is 10,000 elements. If we take a look at the brute force and group by approach, they are an order of magnitude slower than all of the other implementations. So I would definitely eliminate them. The implementation using the for each loop is usually faster than the implementations using any and all, but I would consider using the any and all approaches in a real application because they are much simpler in terms of the amount of code that you have to write. These two methods are one-liners and for each you have to write a custom implementation. Of course, if performance is very important to you, then certainly you should write your own implementation like I showed in this example. If we take a look at the last test case here, with 10,000 elements and the duplicate being around 80% into the collection. You can see that the approaches that create a new hash set in distinct to hash set and new hash set are faster than the approaches iterating over the collection looking for a duplicate. It's not a major difference, but it's worth to consider that the position of the actual duplicate element in the collection is going to significantly affect which implementation comes out as the best. In general, I think that we can come to the conclusion that when the duplicate element is closer to the first half of the collection, the approaches that are short-circuiting, which is the for each, the any, and all implementations, are going to be much faster than the approaches that iterate over the entire collection in distinct to hash set and new hash set. I'm not even considering the brute force and group by approaches because I find them subpar to the remaining implementations. I hope that you enjoyed this video where I showed you 8 ways how you can check for duplicates inside a collection. Leave a comment below the video to tell me which of the implementations you prefer the most and which you would consider using inside of your own project. Make sure that you take a look at these two videos that I prepared for you and until next time, stay awesome!